I'm testing new beauty products on a weekly, even a daily basis, and sometimes I just forget to tell y'all about stuff I'm loving. <laughs> and a couple days ago, I realized that I've been gatekeeping a handful of new affordable beauty favorites that I've been obsessed with. These products have seriously impressed me and you gotta know about them. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. So I've been super stoked to see all of your comments, noticing that my skin has been clearing up recently. And this first product that I'm gonna talk about is one of a few that I have to thank for that. This is the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Solution. I think that this is what did most of the heavy lifting in clearing up my skin. This is only $5.90, but it's one of the most effective skincare products I've ever tried. A couple months ago, my skin really took a turn for the worse and my skincare routine, which had helped me in the past, wasn't cutting it anymore. So I decided to do a full skincare overhaul. I actually did end up switching to a bunch of products from The Ordinary. If you wanna see a video on that and everything that I've been using, let me know. But this product, this did the most. So this product actually went viral on TikTok at the end of last year, and then it was sold out for months. The brand came back, re-released it with an updated formula. I never did get to try the original formula, but this new formula, it works. <laughs> so obviously this contains salicylic acid as the active ingredient to exfoliate and decongest your skin, but this is now a more hydrating formula. So it's not going to leave your skin feeling dry or stripped or tight. It has a light water-based texture. It sinks into the skin super quickly, does not leave any type of film or residue on the skin. I use this every night before my nighttime moisturizer for about a month and a half, and my skin did a 180. The big stubborn cystic spots cleared up. I've been getting less whitehead breakouts, and in general, I feel like my skin texture is more even now, especially I can see it under makeup. Now, my skin is nowhere near 100% clear. I am still having hormonal breakouts during my time of month, but I finally feel like I have a handle on my skincare routine. I have my breakouts under control. I'm not struggling to cover up a ton of redness and dark spots under my makeup. So I really needed to give this product the kudos it deserves. Moving on to an eyeshadow palette that I have been loving and wearing constantly over the last month. This is the new LA Girl Festi Bestie palette. I briefly mentioned this in passing a couple videos ago in my drugstore special event makeup tutorial where I used its sister palette, which is the other palette that came out in this festival themed collection from LA Girl. That one is called Nudie Cutie and it is a neutral palette while Festi Bestie is the colorful option. And while I did not attend any festivals this year, I have been going to a lot of concerts. I went to Billie Eilish this month. I went to Backstreet Boys this month. And this is my go-to palette for when I want to spice it up, I wanna wear some color. This palette is only $15.99 and there is so much potential, so much mixing and matching that can happen. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's a rainbow palette, but we do have like most of the colors in the rainbow in here. And the formula is just so nice. If you watched that special event makeup tutorial, it's the same formula, very soft, very pigmented. There's a great balance in this palette between matte shimmer and metallic finishes. And with these metallics, if you apply them dry, I they are still pretty high impact. They are a little bit more on the shimmery side, but if you apply them wet, the consistency turns almost cream-like and you get a completely opaque, metallic, reflective, foily look. And that is what I did today with the blue shade on my lid. And the thing that I love also about this palette is that the colors just work so well together and the finishes blend together so well. Nothing ever looks muddy. It never looks unblended when you're trying to mix two different colors together. And on your eye, the colors look exactly like how they look in the pan. The one thing that I recommend when working with this palette though, and it goes as well for the Nudie Cutie palette, is this is the type of eyeshadow where you wanna do your eyes before you do your face. Because they are so soft, and especially with these metallics and the shimmers, you will get glitter fallout or 
color fallout depending on which shade you're using. But it is super easy to wipe up with just a makeup wipe if you don't already have your foundation on. So I have gotten in the habit of doing my eyes first with this palette. And then once it's like on your eye and you've got primer under it, you don't have to worry about fallout throughout the day. The only shade that I'm not a huge fan of is this white because it's more of a flaky eyeshadow and not necessarily something that's gonna give you like a solid wash of color. But if you wanna see what all of these shades look like, not just the ones that I used today, I did swatch them on my blog, which I will link below. Next up, this might just be my new favorite drugstore blush from my favorite underrated beauty brand. This is the Koki Cosmetics Soft Gradient Blush. And if you haven't seen Koki before, they have been spotted in Walmarts. Locally to me, they're actually in my Kroger brand supermarket. Super, super affordable, but I also have a 25% off coupon code if you buy their makeup from their site. So if you can't find them locally, you can always do that and save money. Okay, so these soft gradient blushes, these remind me a lot of the Wet n Wild ombre blushes and NYX had an ombre blush for a while as well. And I just love them because you basically get three blush shades in one. You can tap your blush either on the darker side, on the lighter side, or swirl it together. And this blush formula is amazing. I love how it looks on the skin. This is completely matte, but it does not look dry or powdery, and it's very pigmented. So you might actually have a little bit of a learning curve with how much to actually put on. Definitely start out with a light hand, especially if you're going in to the darker shade in the gradient. This blush formula actually contains dimethicone, which in case you're unfamiliar, is a silicone ingredient found in a lot of blurring primers. So that's what helps this go on so smooth. In fact, I feel like it actually blurs the skin texture underneath. And plus, can we just talk about the embossing on this blush? It is such a beautiful design. You can see an elephant face here with some flowers and foliage, just so pretty. It's also worth noting, since you may not be familiar with this brand, since they are on the smaller side, they are PETA certified cruelty-free. It's available in eight shades. It's $8. Again, you can get 25% off with the code slashed beauty. So y'all know that I've been on the lip gloss train recently, and this is one that I've loved wearing, but but it's not gonna be for everyone. This is the Milani Keep It Full Max Lip Plumper. I love wearing these because they have all the pigment of a liquid lipstick, super intense high shine like a gloss, but this is the only drugstore lip plumping product that I feel I can actually see the difference. With that said, this stings. <laughs> This lip plumper uses chili pepper resin to plump your lips and you can feel it kicking in very soon after applying. And it kind of starts out as a warmth and a tingle, but it does intensify to a sting. Like I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I've kind of come to like it because I know that it's actually working, but people that are more sensitive might be bothered. Now this formula also contains hydrating mango seed oil as well as hyaluronic acid. And I do think that that helps take the edge off a little bit, but at least once the stinging dies down, you do have nourished lips. This is not sticky at all. And I do feel like it sets into the lips. It doesn't feel heavy or thick. And I wanna see if you can see the results that I see. I'll show you on the screen, freshly applied. And then five minutes later, I can definitely see a little bit more of a rounder, fuller look just after five minutes of wearing this. Now, now, as with most lip plumpers, the plumped effect isn't going to last all day because it's just your lips reacting to the chili pepper resin. You will have to reapply if you want to keep it up. But again, this is like one of the only drugstore lip plumpers that I can actually see a difference. And plus just wearing it as a lip gloss, even with the plumping aside, I think that it is very comfortable to wear. The colors are gorgeous. So I don't necessarily mind the plumping isn't a long lasting effect, but if I am about to take a photo, I might reapply it to get that effect up again. And finally, this last product that I need to share with you is another new addition to my skincare routine that I am so glad I discovered. So a while ago, I switched from using makeup remover wipes to pretty exclusively using makeup cleansing balm. I think it's way more effective. I think it's more gentle on my skin because I'm not like tugging at it, especially for the full face glam that I do when filming. I think it just works way quicker. Now, most drugstore cleansing balms are 
just ridiculously fragranced, which then does the opposite for my skin. Because I have sensitive skin, a lot of these fragrances are irritating either to my skin or my eyes. So all this time, I've been using the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm, which is not cheap, but really it's the only thing that my skin liked me using until I discovered this product, which is less than half the price. This is the Juno Skin Clean 10 Cleansing Balm. You can get this for about $15 on Amazon. Juno & Co is a California-based, cruelty-free beauty brand. They focus on creating really effective skincare with fresh superfood ingredients. It's called the Clean 10 Balm because there are only 10 ingredients. They keep their products very simple and minimalistic. And the superfood in this one is Japanese pearl barley, which is supposed to nourish and brighten the complexion. It's supposed to help reduce hyperpigmentation and dark spots, which I feel like it's doing, as well as nourishing and hydrating the skin with a vitamin E. Now, this does not disappoint. This will take off a full face of glam, even waterproof makeup very quickly. So this is fragrance-free. That's the first thing that I looked for in the ingredients when I saw this, but it does have a very fresh citrusy orange scent because it contains orange peel oil. It's actually very pleasant. It was something that I was nervous about with the acne prone skin, any type of oils, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But I've been using this now for about three weeks straight, no issue. Like I said, I think this is actually helping my skin in the long run with the brightening ingredients. So you don't know how stoked I am <laughs> to have discovered a more budget-friendly cleansing balm that checks all the boxes for me. Another cool thing about the brand is that they strive to be eco-conscious and sustainable, so all of their product packaging is 100% recyclable. So amazing product, cool brand, so excited for this to be a staple in my skincare routine, and so is my wallet. <laughs> So there you have it. Those were my secret budget beauty favorites that I hadn't shared with you yet. Have you tried any of these? Do you have thoughts on any of them? Let me know in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Dina. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad and join me over in this video next, which is my latest installment in my makeup declutter series where I clean out my bronzers and highlighters. I'll see you over there. Bye.